Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Mark, and uh, thanks for watching. I'm doing a second video um, that I just wanted to post right quick. Uh, this one should be about the music business. The last one I did was the music industry. And the, basically, the, 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 you hear the music industry and the music business. Well, the industry itself is a career, career field. Uh, you know, that's, you know, the industry you're in is the music industry. It's kind of like, you know, what career field you do, like a doctor or whether they're in the medical field. Well, the music industry is a music field. Well, the music business is basically who's making money. So you got to think of it in that term, who's making money. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to be very long in this, but basically I just want to briefly talk about a few things in the music business i know last one i said we're gonna be very long end up being almost an hour but um i just want to talk basically about how artists musicians which are usually artists and musicians managers lawyers labels radio tv film and so forth and theaters and so forth how, how who's making money so let's let's talk about that Okay, I thought I, I thought I hit the stop recording button, but okay. Um, okay. Basically, the music business is basically the business side of the industry. The business side of the industry is always the, the generation of revenue, basically money, profit and law versus losses. You know, how much money can be made versus how much money is going to be lost. And it's basically, it's basic in, in a nutshell, the sales of, of things, whether it's physical media like CDs, cassettes, vinyls, digital downloads, or even possibly a streaming service. And the other part of people making money other than sales, it would be physical performances, meaning touring, doing shows, and so forth. Now, in the music, in the music industry, you know, you're looking at most of the time, the record labels, they, uh, they're they going to have a staff of people. And their concentration is to make money selling product, which the product is an artist. And they their concentration is promotion and marketing of these artists. So to get these artists, they're going to sign these different types of contracts. And the contracts are contracting artists to do sound recordings. And the sound recordings are basically doing sound recordings for the label. That's why the label is the one that's going to own the masters. The song where it's sound recordings. The sound recordings is the masters. They own the property because songs, once you still, when you're dealing with the business side, music becomes intellectual property. And it's a matter who owns the intellectual property. And most of the time, record labels, because they're putting up the money, they're going to want to own the uh, property. And I'm going to tell you why uh, in, in a second. And this makes it harder for the artist to make additional money other places. Like I said, forgive my sniffing. I'm, I am still congested. So uh, forgive me for that. Usually these are... I forgot to add one, which is the 360 deal. But you know me, some of your different types of contracts would be joint venture contracts, which the, and most of the time, this is usually between some major label and some independent or some label that becomes a sub label or an independent label. Uh, and they'll do joint venture where the major label can split costs with the independent label because the independent label can use the major labels resources, financial and marketing and promotional resources to help them promote these artists that are signed under these individual, uh, under these individual record labels that don't have the, the capital and money to market artists. They need the financial support. So you sign a joint venture contract. 
Um, next one would be a 50-50 where, you know, you have these different 50-50 where so much percentage of, of money or that's being made would go to the artist. The other one would go to the label. That really ever happens nowadays. More is 360 deal where they go. The 360 deal is where the label gets a percentage of everything the artist does. You know, this is touring. Most of the time, the the 50 50 where the artists, you know, would give up pretty much the sales portion of the money going to be made for the label, and they're going to make their money on the touring portion. Then there's term, you know, a lot of this would be term contracts where the contract would be anywhere from a one to a seven CD, which is typically normal. And sometimes they'll just do a one CD agreement, meaning you hear this all the time. If a record label says, well, we'll, we'll do just one CD term agreement with you. Basically they don't trust that you're going to make them any money. So a lot of times one CD in, for certain artists is not enough for them to really blow up in some cases. Sometimes it is, sometimes it ain't. And if they don't see that you made them any money, they drop you right in there. You always hear these terms that it's always hard to get a record deal, but it's even harder to get a second record deal once they once the industry found out that you've been dropped from a certain label. It's usually harder because that means that you were not successful and the other labels that if you're fishing for a new label, a lot of them do not want to take a chance on you. The only time that most of the times when artists do leave a, a label and they can get onto a second label with no problems because they have a track record that they were successful. And this is all about sales. And then, of course, there's admin contracts where they can negotiate different things in their deals, point systems and things like that, or they can, they can go in there and, and have leveraging uh, contractual agreements and so forth. But this is in record contracts, but I don't want to get spend too much on, on that, but that's, you know, typical contracts. The 360 is the normal now because the, the loss in record sales of CDs, so the 360, they're trying to make fine ways and they want established artists that already has followings. Now, when it came to sales, this is basically the sales. An artist can negotiate points or basic percentage of the sales. And it typically would be maybe an artist would have three points. Basically, one point would be typically... It's typically one nine point one cents is usually one point. So you're talking three points. That would be about twenty seven point three cents per CD, meaning the album. The typical album average cost of an that CD would be about nine dollars ninety nine cents. So you're talking twenty seven dollars or twenty seven point three cents per per CD album. You know, average CD with maybe ten songs on a CD on average, as an example. Then the other people that also would get points on the album, you know, you get the producers with three points. So you're talking the same 27.3 cents uh, per CD. Uh, super producers get as much as five up to 7%. This means these producers have a track record of producing hits for, you know, these artists work with these producers that turn songs that the artist is doing into mega hits they become super producers we're talking like quincy jones they got like 27 grammys as an example Ten thousand, you know music awards and so forth and the next one would be executives in the department you know that is working with the artists you know a and r reps your a and r reps are the ones that are helping the you know the artists find the right songs and the right producers and then, of course, there's um, points for the songwriters, but the songwriters usually get their money on the back end because the songwriters usually going to get royalties from publishing company and PROs. The next one would be managers. 
uh, artist managers and so forth, but they hardly ever get points most of the time because they're going to get paid by the artists individually, you know, so that really happens, but it can, depends on his managers can get up to points depending on how many, um, you know, how many super mega star artists that these managers are managing. And then the last would be engineers or recording studios because they're the ones doing the recording mixing and, and make the song what it is for the audience. So that's your typical point system. Um, now there's two different things. You have the song or composition. Basically, the song or composition would be someone writes a song. You know, they come up they come up with lyrics for a song, you know, whatever the case may be, or lyrics for a rap or a, a, a musical arrangement or whatever the case may be. That would be considered a song or composition. You know, a composer and, you know, the author would be the songwriter. The composer would be, you know, he has a song idea, whatever the case may be. And, uh, so they are usually songwriters, composers, so forth. They're usually are contracted to a publishing company and so forth. And, uh, you know, they're writing lyrics or whatever the case may be for songs. Now the sound recordings is actually recorded by recording artists at a recording studio. They create sound recordings. So there's two different things and the songs themselves are masters. So with songwriters, they usually, they usually have publishing deals with publishing companies and uh, the artists have record deals with record labels. So the artists usually artists, when they have contracts, they don't write their songs. The record labels get their songs usually from publishing companies. Now, some record labels have their own publishing companies and some record labels have to, you know, go to different publishing companies, separate publishing companies. The publishing company owns a library and or catalog of songs by various songwriters. So these songs written by songwriters are the song compositions that songwriters write. So the PROs, publishing rights organizations, are the ones that are tracking who's going to who's playing these songs to make sure that these publishing company and songwriters receive money in different venues and you'll see what I'm talking about later. The artists which is the recording artists usually are only making their money from performances and a percentage of the sales. The record labels usually are only making their money from the record sales for the most part. This is why some record labels own publishing companies. So, and uh, this is reason why, they want to own the masters because the masters along with, along with the publishing and everything else can make the record labels money in other places. That's why the, most of the time, if an artist doesn't write any material, they just go to a recording studio and record songs. The only time they can make money is when they're performing those songs in public, meaning touring at different places. That's the only, usually only way an artist can make money. They can't make money off the of songs they didn't write. They can only make money off the songs they perform. So now if the artist is also a songwriter, they are two different. They're the same people, but they have two different positions, which means that if an artist is also a songwriter, they usually are attached to a publishing company as well. So when the PRO start paying these money to the publishing companies, the artists can make money off the songs they write. That's why it pays for an artist to be able to be a songwriter as well. But record labels usually only want to make sure these songs are written that's going to guarantee that it can make them money. That's why they use most artists sign a contract. They have no creative, they have no creative control because the artist 
uh, no matter how good they sing, how good well they play an instrument, how well they rap or whatever, some some instances that they might not be able to do their own stuff because they may have talent to be able to to play that instrument or sing, but they don't have any history of producing hits. So the record labels, this is a business, so they want to guarantee to make sure they're going to make money. So they make sure that the artist is, is getting the best songs and they want to make sure the artist is hooked up with the best producers. Now, a producer's job is to turn that song in a way that's going to be recorded that is going to make the song a hit. And a lot of times the a &R will help the a &R, which is the artist and repertoire, will help the artist search out for producers. And the certain producers are, there's lots of producers, but then there's the super producers that have a track record of having artists that they've worked with that became number one hit artists. You're talking platinum, double platinum, all the way up to diamond. And we're talking super super producers like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, Teddy Riley, David Foster, Babyface, uh, and so forth. All these, uh, so many super producers, Quincy Jones, they have so many hits. They are super producers. That's why they can get more points on the sales uh, versus a producer that... Um, might produce um he can they can become a producer but when they first started they're just an average producer like the guy that produced some of the music for swv their first album well that after that first album because it went became a double and triple platinum album he starts and he started getting more credit to work with other artists and as long as he creates the same reputation of productions for more artists then he turns to a super producer but you have some producers that create one or two hits and that's it and then they can't produce any more hits so your your reputation is everything in this business artists producers including all the way down even to the recording studios uh record labels everything is um uh, is about reputation and success usually the artist, which is usually an artist, group members, you know, whether it's three female group, four female group, five female group, or male group, or a band, or just an artist themselves. Where the artist, because if they don't if they don't write any songs, the only places that they're an artist is gonna make money is performances, such as touring. You know, they got a whole, bunch, a whole bunch of places booked up for the year where they're on tour. And I sh I'm going to do another video on the cost of touring because this is the biggest moneymaker for artists in general for most cases. Uh, most artists is going to make their most money in doing shows more than anything else because everything else is unpredictable. So for the touring... The um, and this is show to include doing TV shows such as the you know maybe uh the, I don't know the View the Talk or whatever the case may be they might do a five minute you know interview or a guest appearance or you know whatever case and these places pay these artists to appear uh, based on popularity, i.e. Bruno Mars uh, might appear on to do a four minute song on the Ellen Ellen DeGeneer show uh, whatever the case may be um, these are the kind of spotlights that an artist can get on TV and they get paid for that I don't know what the exact amount is but they do get paid for that and doing shows in general but touring and doing shows is the heart um, and the reason being you'll see why they have to, a lot of them have to do a lot of tours in the most case the only other way that an artist makes money is the percentage of the sales from digital downloads, maybe a certain amount from streaming such as Spotify or whatever the case may be. And uh, whatever their point system is um, for the record label. 
other than that, an artist will try to create merchandise sales, you know, have their T-shirts printed with their fit picture on it, maybe uh, their logo, whatever case. They're selling their merchandise, hats, coins, whatever. Some of them try to sell, you know, start their own perfume lines or shoe lines or whatever the case may be. So they try to make money that way using their celebrity status to, you know, sell their own private merchandise. Other than that, it's just doing TV and radio guest appearances. Once again, I don't know the exact, exact amount, but they get paid for that. Um, but doing these TV and radio guest appearances in different places like New York, Florida, you know, maybe Dallas or, you know, Los Angeles or whatever case. But the thing is that the artist still has to get there and they might have scheduled TV and radio guest appearances and, these shows they have they have timeline deadline uh exact deadline timelines they have to meet so they the one thing that an artist cannot afford to do is be late where they were supposed to appear maybe at 252 to be on a show for three minutes or whatever they can't afford to be late um because that the producers of the show get real mad because they already announced to the audience and these are pre-recorded shows or live taping shows or whatever. And if they were supposed to, and they announced we got certain artists going to be here at, as a guest appearance and the artist is late. Oh, you talking about trying to, to make that up. Oh, it's almost virtually impossible. You can almost guarantee that's going to hurt your reputation in, in a major way that they might not ever ask you to come back again because it makes the show look bad. But um, anyhow, those are usually the top ways an artist makes money. Now, I don't have the exact numbers for that because it varies. Um, I will try to do that in the next slide because I'm not going to make this an hour video like I did the last one. So I'm going to move on. There are non-payment perks that an artist can get. You know, these are just perks and accolades. And I'll talk a little bit more in depth. But, you know, you talk about magazine articles for promotion. Um you know, award academies, like being able to be invited to go to the Grammys or whatever the case may be. You'll get tickets to, to appear at. You'll get a little red carpet treatment because you're a celebrity and some VIP treatment, you know, backstage green rooms where you're back in the back. You're not in a normal audience. You're in the back room with other celebrities. You go through a separate door. And then, of course, just being celebrity status, you know, you're, you, because your name, your popularity and fame, that don't that doesn't pay you anything. Because fame doesn't pay you anything. Being a celebrity, you can be a celebrity with, you know, in a bad way. Like, for example, Hitler. Hitler was a celebrity. He's famous, but not in a good way. So the object in the music business is we're trying to generate revenue. You know, we're not trying, you know, a lot of people, they they look at all the perks and accolades of the non-payment stuff, um, such as awards and you know, VIP and red carpet treatment and backstage and all that and having this celebrity popular and fame. But you, if you don't have any money, you, you know, who wants to be a broke celebrity? And there are a lot of broke celebrities. Now, other people that get paid, um, some artist manager can get percentage of the sales made. It just varies. Some, most, but most artists are just going to get paid. The artist managers are going to get paid by the artist. But there's the business managers who are going to make money, uh, the road managers, the lawyers, and the you know split shits, the split uh, split shits. Uh, that's uh, sheets. <laughs> uh, excuse my French. I wasn't trying to curse. I was trying to say sheets, split sheets. These are contributors to who contributed to the song. If two people added some lyrics, they are added to the split sheets, which the split sheets determines how the money is going to be split when this money is being made against uh, for all contributors to the song, the sound recording and so forth. The artist managers, basically their job is to, you know, basically keep the artists motivated, get them, you know, in the right connections, um, Make sure they're, you know, they're coordinating with the right, with the right uh, people, such as 
dance choreographers, the right musicians, you know, the artist managers making contacts with different people. The business manager is basically like an accountant. He or she is these is basically there to make sure that all money that's being made is being distributed to who is supposed to be in, being distributed to. The role manager's basic job is to make sure the artists get where they need to be when it's come to, you know, where they're supposed to be doing these shows, traveling, uh, coordinating with booking agents and things like that. You know, they're coordinating. They're also to make sure that the artists are, you know, they're the role managers make sure road crews is loading up all the equipment onto the, whether it's going to be by some sort of travel bus or it's getting on a plane or whatever the case may be. The road managers to handle all that. The lawyers just basically are looking over contracts and they might even help the artists negotiate the right type of contract when they're signing a contract. They're looking over all the, the legal jargon that maybe the artist doesn't understand. And once again, the split sheets, to, you know, when it's come to making these songs and who's contributing to lyrics and or creating music or whatever the case is all written on split sheets. Say uh, this person added the guitar line here, keyboard line there, synth sound there, drum hit there, whatever. If it, You know, it all depends on who contributes. The artist, which is a recording artist, a, a solo artist, a group or a band. They're either going to have a contract with a major label or a sub label, or they're going to be with an independent label, or they're just going to be remain independent. But the artist remember has to understand the label pays the artist while they're under contract or the group or the band. So the artist is going to get their money once the label collects all the money from sales and everything else, minus recruit minus they're going to take out recruitment. Uh, recoupments, advances, and other fees. Um, they're going to take all that stuff out first before they pay the artist. And sometimes, it depends on how much the artist made, they, with all the recoupments and advances and all the other stuff, the artist might not receive anything because they're negative. And then there's the songwriter. The songwriter gets their payment from PROs and publishing companies. The publishing companies pay the songwriter. They're usually split. 50% usually go with the publishing company, 50% go to the songwriter. Uh, and this is all money going to be made from licensing from the publishing company licensing the songs that the songwriter has written out. They're going to send these licenses out to different who wants ever wants to use these songs. Then they're going to, you know, the publishing company is going to come up with license agreements of the various different types of licenses. And then the PROs also pay the songwriter and publishing company because they're monitoring who's playing this stuff. So the performance rights organizations and the performance rights organizations, the main big two really out of all of them was BMI and ASCAP. There's CSAC. There's a, there's a whole lot of them, but CSAC and uh, BMI, well actually BMI and ASCAP is the biggest two. So when a person associated with either BMI or ASCAP, you just have to look at uh, how they pay. Um, ASCAP usually have a $50 fee to apply. BMI is free, but as a publisher, I think you have to, you know, I think you have to pay 150 if you're individual publisher, or if you with a corporation 250 or something like that. And then the course is the amount of how much they're going to pay out ASCAP. I think, you have to make so much money before ASCAP will give you a check. I think BMI, uh, regardless of how much you make, they will pay you every every fiscal new year. They Whatever you got in your pot, they'll pay you. Uh, it just depends. So there's more. There's videos on it, but uh, these are just minor details. And um, PROs usually only pay the songwriters and publishers. They so uh, as a recording artist, a recording artist, unless they are the songwriter and they own their own masters and they have their own publishing, if the recording artist they get their money from the record label, songwriters get their money from PROs and publishers. That's the two. 
when it comes to radio, radio only pays the publisher and PROs because radios only make their money from advertisement. So, and most radios are corporate owned and controlled. So the most radios, like most radios back in the day, they had uh, the program managers can come up with programs that are best fit the radio station because they're trying to draw on the artist by playing the number one hits. But now most radios are becoming corporate control now. So the corporates are going to have it already structured that they already know what songs they want to play because so the program managers don't have much control in radio today. And most radio stations buy yearly licenses from publishers for their library catalogs of songs. And they pay these one-time licensing fees or yearly, you know, newly licensed fees every year to use the catalog of songs, which means that if they go with Warner Brothers Publishing, as an example, they can use all the songs under Warner Brothers catalogs. Well, guess, you know, we talk about Warner Brothers that own is a record label as well, and they're also one of the big major uh, corporations that own multiple record labels under it. Well, guess what? This is why record labels want to own the masters because they can like, they can send their stuff to their publishing company and allow them to use them songs in other places, such as TV, radio, uh, film, and various other places. And guess who's getting paid if they are the publishing company as well. The publishing company is going to get money from the PROs. That's why they want to own the masters. The recording artists, because when they go in these songs, when they record these songs, they don't own the masters. That's why the artists can are not making as much money as people think. The only time the artists can really make money is they're touring. And that's a whole different video because touring can, can make an artist can make quite a bit of money touring or it could, you know, be, it, it all depends on the circumstances. So here's an example of what an artist might make from a sales, uh, from the sales. And that's the reason why the artists are going to usually make more money when an artist is under a record contract. This is the reason why the artists usually make more money torn than they do from sales. And here's an example. Let's say the artist goes into, they have a contract, they record their first CD in, in uh, the first CD, which is an album. They have about 10 songs on it or whatever the case may be. And the, and the label is going to go ahead and release the album because they, an artist can go to a recording studio, record all these songs and out and the record label say, nah, we're not going to release any of those. I don't think we can make any money off of it. Go back and, you know, and then you need to go back in the studio. But by the time the most artists then wasted their advance budget on the first CD, so now they got to figure out where they're going to get money to go back and try to do a second CD because they didn't blew that $250,000 on advance. Plus, they was also living off that advance. Try, you know, in the meanwhile, because the artist's not going to make money until that's why they're giving advance because they're not going to make any more money until the, to the, to the CD starts selling. So that's why you can see why so many artists that sign record contracts, most of them sign a record deal and get shelved. Because whatever they recorded at the recording studio, the record label didn't like it and they're going to sit on it and they're not going to release it because the record label don't want to take a chance of releasing something that won't sell. You know, and sometimes the record label, most of the time the record label's judgment of not releasing material is right, but there are a lot of circumstances where they shelved an artist on a really great end, the artists can't do nothing because they're on the contract. And then the artists like, you know, so now they're stuck shell. They got no more budget. They got no more money. Now they're stuck and they're trying to get out of their contract. And, um, sometimes a record label will drop them and get them on the contract. And once again, if you get, if you get that reputation of being dropped, it is hard to go find a new record label because you got a reputation of being unsuccessful, even though it may not be the artist's fault. But in some instances, some artists can record this music and then the, art, the record label didn't like it and they're going to say, no, nah, we don't like that. And now they're, they're wasted all that money on whatever the case may be. But anyhow, the, the payment can go something like this. 
An artist make gets uh arm the artist um the average seed might be nine dollars ninety nine cent. And let's say for example, they sold six hundred fifty thousand units, which is over five hundred thousand units, which means the RIA is going to see the sales as well as Billboard. They become certified gold, and um, so the la the label, the label. You notice I hit, said that first. The label off those sales of those six hundred fifty thousand units, the label made six million nine hundred forty three thousand five hundred dollars. Now, because of their point system, the artist is going to get three points, which is, tw you know, 27.3, which g gives the artist, you're talking, and I think this is correct. I think it was 20, yeah, nine points. Uh, yeah, I think that's correct. The math might be wrong, but I think I'm pr I might be wrong on this. I had to double check this, but I came up with this. On average, let's say off that sales, the... Um, uh, I think it's smaller, a smaller number than that. Now I'm now I'm questioning that because 27 cents. You're talking nine dollars, ten dollars. Uh, that would that, that number's I think that number is incorrect, but I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, so let's say they made the artist made one million seven hundred fifty three thousand two hundred forty five dollars out of that nearly seven million dollars. The artist gets one point seven million, but the artist is not going to get that one point seven million simply because they have to minus the advance they owe the label. They have to minus the $300,000 tour support they owe the label because they're going to have to go on tour. Um, then promotion, because the radio is going to promote it. You know, they're going to get on the radio stations and and on the billboard signs and on, on you know, TV commercials or whatever, radio sponsorships and stuff like that. Then they're going to, you know, probably even almost a half a million on recruitments because of you're talking limo rides, the food, clothing, restaurants, hotels, travel. So $5,000 in recruitment fees for that. Plus another $250,000 in, $250, in CD manufacturing cost. So the artist is really, after all those expenses that they're going to pay the label back, they're left with about $200,000, right? A little over $200,000 as an example. And then there's minus, but the artist, the artist has to still pay the lawyer, the business manager, which is the BM. They have to pay the um, road manager, 20 grand. They have to pay the artist manager, 25 grand. And they still have to pay the lawyer about 14 grand. So all that they're left with about $146,000 out of that 7 million. Well, why, you know, why is that the majority of that went to the record label? Because the record label is going to take about 75, 80% of the record sales. And now, like I said, in the other video, the reason for that is because they're like, we have to pay our staff as well as pay other artists advances and everything else. So they, they have their, you know, and plus they're like, well, we have the money. You don't. That's why the, we can take what we can take. And that's, it was in your contract. It's kind of like, you know, so you get the point. So anyhow, out of that, 146,000 left, and it's if it's a solo artist, they're gonna get that 146,000. But if it's band, they have to split it among the band members or the group members. So if it's three people, you're talking everyone's gonna get a just a, just under fifty thousand dollars. That's it. And all these, every one of these artists have a house or an apartment. You know, they got to buy food. They got to pay their utilities. They still got to travel. They still got to pay for their car, their clothing, and everything else. And so you can see why these artists, why you've heard so many artists say, I'm still, I'm broke. Yeah. You know, you're trying to get an apartment, trying to get food and everything else, all this stuff. And, and that's only for that one CD. So the artist has to tour. And most of the time, usually, um, the artists, if they're lucky, because they have all these expenses, if it even goes, uh, this is, you know, going over a goal, 650000 but sometimes it might not even go gold. It might only go four hundred or 200 or 300000 units or whatever case. And they still have all these expenses, so they might usually be negative and owe the label. And it, 
it all depends on where all they're traveling and everything else. So you can see how this thing builds up real quick. Now, like I said, with publishing companies and PROs, because whenever an artist does a song and the song becomes a hit, most of the time, some place, some in some point, because it's a hit, like for example, Bruno Mars collaborated with the other guy, Uptown Funk, and they start doing all these appearances for you know the halftime show or for some you know for a sports event, you know whatever the case may be, um, you know whatever is being played on the radio, they it's so popular they're gonna want to use it in one of these movies or films because films like they use the most popular songs to help the film. Uh, you know, your internet streaming, even social media, you know, like even YouTube. That's why a lot of people that do YouTube videos, you got to be careful of playing people's music because it's social media. And the PROs are monitoring that as well as satellite radio, such as, you know, your satellite radio. Um, streaming websites such as iHeartRadio. You got, you know, Pandora, Spotify. You also have Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, all these different venues are going to, you know, so for example, a movie, a movie might want to use, um, a song and there's going to, the movie have to use, they have to attain not only a sync line, just to sync the, uh, the sync, the music to the film. They also have to get a master license because the song is going to be played in the film. They also have to get a mechanical case. They print, DVDs or whatever the case, they have to get a mechanical license because it's attached to some sort of hard, you know, like a DVD. Then there's performances, you know, so there's several licenses that films have to acquire. Um, same thing with TV shows. If they're going to use these music, master license, mechanical license, uh, um, sync license and stuff like that. So with these licenses, the publisher comes up with these payment agreements with these TV and radio and film and all that. And that's the reason why, right? That's the main reason why an artist has to understand this is why they want to own their publishing and masters and not the radio labels that are and so forth, because they want to be a songwriter because the songwriter and the, and the publishing company and all that are going to make money. Every time these songs are being used in all these different places, the songwriter and the pub and the publishing company makes money and they get all this from the PROs. This is why you want to think your song is more than when you're creating your music. This is why you're creating your music to be, to make you money. Your songs can make you money in more ways than one. And then of course, the last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to wrap the video because this was almost an hour but it's not going I'm about to end it because this, uh, I didn't want this to be an hour like the other one, but, uh, there's the accolades, um, you know, from awards shows like academies that, you know, an artist can win. There's voting boards. There's people that vote in these academies, um, that pushed for these artists to win these trophies, such as a Grammy, a Grammy or, an, or American music award or a CMA award or, MTV award, those are just trophies there, but they are. And of course, you know, a lot of people say it's nice to just to be nominated because it's credibility, it's credit, but to win the actual trophies even better. But a lot of times you'll see artists that have Grammys on their, you know, sitting on the shelves. And they also, if they sold 500,000 or million copies, 2 million copies, they're going to get gold and platinum awards from the RIA. It's a separate award company. And they're also, because of these sales, not only they are the RI, but they're going to chart on Billboard because Billboard charts sales from the Nielsen Sound scan. Uh, and, you know, you so the Sound Exchange and Sound and Scan is two important places that an artist needs to make sure the songs are registered with because that's what's tracking sales. And um, Sound Scan... Um, you know, we're talking barcodes and stuff like that. UPC, UPC barcodes. And of course, IRSCs, um, attached to all these songs, they're tracking the sales of songs and, and CD albums. But the other escalate would be gold and platinum awards. But the thing is you can get all these awards, you can get these trophies, 
uh, like TLC, they got Grammys, but they were still were broke. And they said, you know, they 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 broke it down one time when they was look. They was like we were get, they were getting awards. They're getting awards right there on stage and say, look, we're broke. And they like people looking at how you getting all these music awards and all that, and you got all these gold platinum awards. But it doesn't matter, you know, you can have a gold or platinum album on your wall and you can have these Grammys and awards on your shelf, but it doesn't do no good if you're broke, if you're not making any money. Because like I said, the biggest money maker is when the PROs and the publishing companies are paying the songwriters. Like I said, re um, artists, recording artists don't make any money if they don't write any songs. They only make their money from performing in public. And if they're not performing in public, they're not making any money. But these songs are being used in other places in movies, films, TV. That's still making money for the artists, whether they're performing or not. Um, through these licenses and things like that. So that's going to do it. Um, that's going to do it for this video. I just want to talk a little bit about how artists get paid. I want to do one more thing. I'm going to do a third one on the cost of touring because that's expensive and what it takes, what it's going to cost to tour. Um, so that's going to do it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I know this is almost an hour, but not quite an hour. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.